Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the next track get and set up here on Baku. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, if you've been a long term follower and subscriber of the channel, you know I hate this track with a passion. Um, however, in F124, it feels a little bit better to drive. Uh, you can feel the car a lot more in the force feedback, and uh, but not not perfect, but still better. And uh, yeah, Baku is a very very technical track. Um, a lot of precision needed on the braking, on the turning as well, and on the throttle. One millimeter too early uh, or too much steering, or you know, just a little too early on the brakes or too late on the throttle, you know, you can lose a lot of time around here. So let's get into the track guide first and very quickly. Thank you to all channel members and subscribers as well for bringing us where we are. Now let's get started with the hot lap here similar to how you end your lap and start your lap it begins all the way back here break between the 50 and 100 meter board and uh, that's how you're going to set up your exit for the pit straight basically you know this is uh, the end of sector 2 and your sector 2 starts here and on the exit you can use all the exit curb if you have a good right height and suspension setup like i have if your right height is a little too low or suspension is too soft, you can't take the curb like that. So you're going to lose time. And then just keep it tight to the left, keep it tight to the right. And then keep your car over to the right hand side to minimize the track distance without scrubbing your steering too hard. And then turn on DRS which is 100 meter later this year compared to last year. So the DRS in fact is not that strong. And now into turn 1, this is where the fun begins. Uh, right before you reach the 100 meter board and there's also the black box on the top right that's going to be your braking board your braking marker down to fourth gear or third gear in the race and start picking up throttle as soon as you hit the inside curb uh, to gain a little bit of momentum on the exit and let it run wide but do not use more than half the curb here and then for turn two you want to be breaking right after the 100 meter board or there's this exit road that orange barrier there's a, a stop sign on the top right whichever you want to use and then at turn two you can take a little bit off the curb but not too much keep the steering straight as you are accelerating out of the corner use all the track on the exit open up drs and just go up the gears stay straight and to the right hand side spot the 100 meter board from far away and then that is going to be your braking reference here so break in a straight line down to fourth gear or third gear for the apex in the race throw the car in and let the car run wide on the exit once again similar trend for all corners slow in fast out everywhere use all the exit curb bring the car over to the left hand side and now for turn four this is going to be a little bit tough to spot. You have to spot that 50 meter board behind the bushes on the top here. And break in a straight line and then trail break in. Let the car run wide on the exit once again. And now into the end of sector one. Spot the 50 meter board, break right before it ends. So somewhere around 60 to 70 meters. Break in a straight line, heavy. And then down to third gear. Hug the inside line here. You can go even tighter here. And it opens up the next right hander so let's see how do you do it with precision i haven't done it the best of course but yeah there you go you can use pretty much the road lines to as your guidance and now for the next part turn seven as you reach the orange barrier on the right or before the 50 meter bot on the left that's going to be your braking spot break in a straight line down to third gear and mount as much curb as possible here this is within track limits as long as one tire touches the white line you're still valid it gains you a little bit of time on the exit keep your car straight and now the dreadful turn eight before the 50 meter board or after the black box that's where you want to brake lightly and take it in fourth gear or third gear throw the car in to carry momentum through the uphill but be careful you know <laughs> you don't want to do a stupid there uh, once your car is straightened out here on the exit, just mild tap on the brakes as you can see and then down to third gear or keep it in fourth gear for this right hander. Hug the inside so that you can open up the next left hander. All about the exits in this track. So let's see. Keep it on the right as much as you can and then yeah, pretty much here. 
keep applying throttle all the way through here to carry the momentum don't apply brakes don't lift off at all keep some throttle all the way and on the exit where my front left tire is this is the track limit here so make sure you to use all the track space you have and now all the way down into turn 15 stay tight to the left stay tight left here as well and now for the next important braking zone spot that braking marker on the right 50 or the start of the red and white curb follow that uh, the road lines here the double lines here as your guide keep it straight you can drift outwards as you're braking here as you see here and you're still within track limits here and as you as soon as you're about to hit that yellow board on the right that's you where you're going to be turning in and once you hit close to the apex start applying throttle to carry momentum downhill keep it in third so that you don't uh, lose momentum when you're shifting up to fourth in this game and uh, same thing here as you started the lap that's how you're going to end the lap for the last two corners and from here on on you just have to breathe and hope no one overtakes you here on the straight we're gonna be losing a little bit of time here on the straight because uh, this reference lap time is against a lower downforce so the previous one the faster one was on a lower downforce this one is a higher downforce by a few clicks for the race so that uh, you know you get a good amount of race space and it's also usable in a intermediate semi dry conditions here and there you go <laughs> after a breather uh, we finally get into the setups and uh, for Baku well uh, there's a little bit of conundrum here you can use a low downforce setup or high downforce setup and make it both work but what I decided to go for after a few race simulations is 26 20 on the wings here uh, this is pretty good for race pace especially uh, in uh, in heavy fuel uh, this allows you to you know, just break a little bit later or a little bit safer but if you want to be lower downforce all the way if your park firm is turned off go for something like 21 15 or somewhere in between and adjust your front wing according to your liking you can go even lower on the rear wing but it's not really worth it in the race <coughs> excuse me for on throttle keep it at 100 for your qualifying attempt you can use 80 or 90 in some corners to let the car rotate more as you're turning but yeah as as you prefer it's all personal preference you can go down to 70 even for the race uh, when the tires are starting to wear out so you can be a little bit more gentle on the throttle and not lose the back end as for the off throttle you can keep it at 20 um, or you can even go down even to 15 or 10 the reason i've done 20 is because i find it a little bit tough under the braking the car keeps locking up no wonder what i do so last option is to adjust the off throttle so i don't lose the back end under braking and uh, maybe for the race you can keep it at 20 or 30 and 100 percent engine braking for maximum ers recharge and fastest way to slow down the car now we move on to suspension geometry pretty much the same as usual left 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 um, maybe you can use a little bit of rear toe in and a little bit of front toe out to get the car pointing more with the front toe and give you a little bit more stability with the rear toe but otherwise keep it the same and we move on to suspension where it pretty much going to decide how your car feels here and uh, i've gone for a stiff front suspension 41 i've tried 36 somewhere in between the car definitely responds much better on the front end in qualifying but in the race it's so uh so so pointy i i can't control it so again you can lower your front right height to get a little bit more turn in 18 is the lowest you should go here if you're using 41 suspension otherwise leave it at 20 and you're pretty good to go if you want a little bit more response on the front end to turn in a bit more you can lower down to 38 or 39 front suspension and maybe up to 22 or 21 front right height to balance it out so that you don't bottom out on the straights and similar concept for the rear suspension um, one rear suspension also works around here but you need to use a very high right height which compromises your uh, ability to put down the power quicker so 55 is the lowest i could go on this high downforce setup with 10 rear suspension but if you're going to use low downforce i definitely recommend trying on 50 on the rear right height 
it compensates for the downforce you lose on the lower downforce setup. So it's definitely something you can try out. As for the anti-roll bars, usually I start off with 21 on the front. Um, you know, it's good in high speed corners, but here uh, I'm getting a lot of understeer on the exit. So I've tried playing around with it. I've set it with 16, 17. This is the sweet spot I found it in this track for me. And uh, you can definitely go lower or higher depending on how you like it. Uh, for a slow corner track like Baku, you know, it's all about personal preference and uh, more about your driving rather than the setup. Setup helps a little bit, of course. Same thing for the rear anti roll bar. Usually I start off with 15 uh, as a baseline, like I have. But, um, you know, 15 was moving around too much. The rear was sliding too much uh, with this front anti roll bar at 16. So I've dropped it down to 12 which um, gives me a good balance between the front and rear. You can also drop it down to 10 if you want a little bit more stability on the rear end for your race scenario. So it's all about personal preference here. Like I said, a lot of trial and error you can do to find your sweet spot. And if you need any help, you know, the comment section is down there. Let me know. Brakes, 100% brake pressure. And brake bias, you want to be using 56 all the time sometimes 57 once your tire wear uh, is starting to kick in you can even use 58 but there's not much benefit in that um and we move on to the tire pressures <laughs> again no secret here maximum tire pressures for the race because that well that minimizes overheating around here we are using the softest compound around here so they're going to overheat quite easily you can drop the tire pressures a little bit but i found that if you drop the tire pressures you definitely need to raise your front right head by one or two clicks to prevent it from bottoming out on the straights and the corners. Otherwise, keep it at maximum. If you really need a little bit more front grip, you can drop it by half PSI on the front and that should be the most amount of adjustment you'll do. And that's it. That's all the track guide and setup around Baku. I will leave you with the full speed hot lap to enjoy and uh, let me know where I can improve. Definitely not my best track, so uh, I'll appreciate your comments. See you next time. Take care and goodbye.